Thank you all for joining us for this evening's event. My name is Nick, and I'm one of the events hosts here at Powell's Books in Portland, Oregon. Before we begin, I want to encourage you to check out our lineup of upcoming virtual events by visiting our website at pals.com. If you don't already do so, please follow us on our social media channels via Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. Tonight, we are thrilled to welcome Liana Fink in conversation with Roz Chast, talking about Liana's new book, Let There Be Light. Liana Fink is a cartoonist and an illustrator who has contributed to The New Yorker since 2015. In her ambitious and transcendent graphic novel, Let There Be Light, she turns her keen eye to none other than the Old Testament, reimagining the story of Genesis with God as a woman, Abraham as a resident of New York City, and Rebecca as an idol, among many other delightful twists. In this retelling of the millennial, millennia old stories of Adam and Eve, Abraham and Isaac, Jacob and Esau, haunt, like the, haunt the pages of like familiar but forgotten nursery rhymes, transmuted by time but still deeply resonant. With her trademark insightfulness, wry humor, and supple moving visual style, Fink accentuates the latent sweetness and timeless wisdom of the original text, infusing it with wit and whimsy while retaining every ounce of its spiritual heft. I think we'll be joined in conversation by Roz Chast, longtime cartoonist for The New Yorker and author of Can't We Talk About Something More Pleasant, which was the winner of the National Books Critics Circle Award and the inaugural Kirkus Prize and was a finalist for the National Book Award. This evening's event will include an audience Q&A, so please use the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen if you'd like to ask a question. As well, if someone has typed a question you'd also like to know the answer to, please upvote that particular question by clicking the thumbs up button. Lastly, support Liana and Powell's by purchasing a copy of her book from us. A link to by Let There Be Light will be shared in the chat a couple of times tonight, along with links to Roz's books as well. All right, both of you, Liana and Roz, we are so thrilled to have you with us. Welcome. Thanks. Thank you, Nick. Thank you so yeah. much for having us. Thank you, Roz. Thank you. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, I'm very excited. Um, I wanted to just say right up front that I read your book and, and loved it. Just uh, thought it was amazing, really moving, really interesting. Um, Thank and you. I have some things I wanted to ask you about it and about, I don't know, this and that. So, but maybe we'll, we should start with sharing um, some, some pages from the book with our audience. Okay, I'm going to do a very quick reading from the very beginning of the book. Um, I also <clears throat> am getting over a cold. First, first, she created the heavens and the earth. It was all basically a mess at this point, with darkness floating on the face of the depths. That was the beginning of disappointment. She lay there, unable to move, wondering if this was all she was capable of. Time or something passed. Finally, she opened her mouth and said, let there be light. And there was light. I'll call this one day and this one I'll call night. And the first day was spent and gone forever. She was despondent, but only for a little. The next day, she drew a horizon between the waters below and the waters above. The former she called earth, the latter sky. Thus, the second day was used up too. On the third day, what have we here? I'll call it land. Next, she invented the color green. She went wild with it. And so the third day vanished too, but the days kept coming. That's it for now. It's, uh, I, I have to, I, I wanted to ask you how, uh, and I hope this isn't like an intrusive question, but how big a part did religion play in your life when you were a child? I, Grew up surrounded by it. I grew up in a relatively observant family of we were we were the denomination of Judaism called conservative Jews, which means you're somewhat you're somewhat observant, but you are not super observant. But 
um, both my parents grew up Orthodox, which means they were more observant. So we were kind of observant conservative Jews. And I, we went to synagogue every week. We did, we were kosher. We did Friday night. Um, um, we, we did Shabbat on Friday night. And I went to Jewish schools from first grade through 12th grade. So it was my world. It wasn't a world I loved, but I, I think this book is my way of working out my relationship with Judaism and with God, because the things I didn't, that didn't work for me in my upbringing is that I was just too weird. It's not that I didn't love God and the stories. So I, I also am just deeply not religious and I can't open my mouth without slander it like being I'm I can't even remember the word but just like bad bad to religion um I just think of God as a funny character and I can't worship I can't worship I'm not worshipful but I still love the stories of my own way well you had mentioned I think it was in the um the author's note at the end that uh, you, you studied the Torah. I hope you don't mind if I look at some of my notes. <laughs> um, that you had studied the, to the Torah at Hebrew day school. And you said, um, I thought of it as a portrait of a childlike and therefore relate relatable character full of feelings and desires. And yeah. that's how you thought of God. Yeah. And it's so interesting. I mean, so you, you did think about God when you were a child. Yeah, but never as someone powerful who created the world. Well, never as someone who there was a question of believing in versus not believing in, and more like Paul Bunyan or something. But you never, I mean, you know, it's so funny. I mean, years ago, I, I did a cartoon where I asked people like how they pictured God when they were, when they were little. And the responses I got were so interesting. Um, one of my kids said that he pictured God like the disembodied Paul Newman head on the salad dressing bottle. Oh, that is God. That's correct. <laughs> that was actually Petey. Uh, that's how Petey pictured God. But I got all kinds of strange <laughs> responses. Um, uh, one friend of mine, uh, pictured uh, in the Wizard of Oz, the giant, another giant head. Yeah, kind of similar. Thing. Similar. Um, less hair. Less hair. Uh, there were a lot of people who did picture God with a long white beard and, you know, oh. like a cartoon uh, version of a God. And I remember when I was a child, I must have been about five or six, there was a, there was a little girl in my neighborhood named Sharon. And she told me, she said, well, you know, God came to our church. And I was kind of skeptical, I remember. And um, I said, well, what did he look like? And, you know, he had the long white robe and the long white beard. Uh, huh. But Bill, well, I guess that settles it. Yeah, that, that settles it. But, you know, your relationship with this is, is such a contrast to um, my husband hates religion because he grew up Presbyterian and the God that he pictured was so wrathful, even though, you know, he grew up with the New Testament and, but, you know, also the Old Testament. And, yeah. you know, if you did something wrong, you were going to be sent to hell. Um, I don't know. So, it, but I think even more than like how we picture God, it's like, did your parents were they did they talk about philosophy did they ask questions like you know why is there something rather than nothing you know yeah. which I think of is like the most basic and weirdest question of all and how do we not all go like bananas not asking ourselves that question every second you know um, I don't know what am I asking here um, do you what's your god do you, did you have one as a kid? Do you have one now? I, when I was a kid, I conflated the word guard and God. <laughs> and I pictured 
because my parents didn't, I grew up Jewish, but it was a very different kind of Jewish. I think my parents yes. were very skeptical yeah. about the existence of a being, you know, whether they were they, activist Jews. They, they were more, yeah, they were very, they were activists. They were, you know, union and this and that. Um, uh, and, you know, their parents had left Russia to get away from religion. Um, really? That's what they were getting away from? Yeah, and the food. Yeah, and the pogroms, maybe. Pogroms and, yeah, all of it, all of it. They just didn't want any part of it. Maybe the pogroms. Yeah, that was a problem. Um, uh, yeah, so I pictured God, like, you're, when I was growing up, there was, um, and I'm so glad we're past this now, you know, fear of a, an atomic disaster. Oh, um, great. Yeah, so nice right now. Oh, so, yeah, we've really outgrown that. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, so, so they, they did a lot of drills in school. And um, part and part of it, there was an ad where a, a safety guard would tell you like what to do in the event of you know something really bad happening and it was a clean shaven young man and I remember he had like a white helmet sort of thing and a black sort of stretchy top and that's how oh. I pictured um but you know it's he came into why do you think so many sorry what he came into your school or he's like a no no of... that's how I imagined God when I was a child no I mean the guard the guard, I must have seen it in an ad or something. That's what I, I must have seen that. But um, what was I going to ask you? Oh, this is terrible. I just, uh, so many questions. Um, what was I going to ask you? Oh. Um, well, let's talk about the Kabbalah. Okay. What, um, I don't know anything about it, really. I know it's kind of mystical, but. I don't either. The fun for me of this book that's very hard to explain and very embarrassing is that I really didn't, I didn't do any research besides just reading the Torah a few, a number of times in different translations. I didn't, I didn't, there was just so, there's so much commentary. It's like the most studied thing I can think of. And I am not much of a researcher and I didn't want to spend a thousand years reading every bit of commentary about it and I didn't know how to filter the commentary so I just didn't but I'm I'm a less educated person in a world of very educated people in Judaism so the Kabbalah idea came from my mom when I was telling her how frustrating it was for me that that God kind of withdraws throughout the Torah like God is really a character in the first third of the book of Genesis. It's all about her creating things. And then by the time we reach Abraham, it's all about Abraham and his quest to be kind of a godly man, but we never really encounter God. And, and she just withdraws more and more from there. Um, and I was telling my mom that this was a hard book for me to make because I was really interested in God and I'm not particularly interested in this guy who's just wandering and making wells and stuff which is Abraham and my mom said oh that theory is a Kabbalistic theory called symptom that God withdraws herself in order for humans to be able to kind of create themselves and exist and it's all part of the divine plan so that was kind of how I explained to myself why this beautiful story was was getting away from me and why I had to keep keep going and telling the other story the rest the rest of the stories at what point in your reading and rereading of the Torah did you think I'm ready to write this book and how did you sort of know um there was a little bit of genesis in my last graphic novel passing for human which was a memoir it, which was about being a woman and an artist and it's a bit about me and it's a bit about a character who's I would say is my mom I'm not sure if she would say she's my mom um and I had interludes coming from Genesis and that's that was where the female god came from I I made god into a woman and I was 
just like meditating on what it means to be a woman artist. And my, it was my editor's idea, Andy Ward at Random House. He, he knew that I really wanted to pitch him another book. And he said, why don't you do Genesis with this God? And that's where, I, and I was very, very excited too. I wouldn't have presumed that anyone would want to publish that book because there have been so many comics adaptations of Genesis already. I've never read anything like this. I mean, I just thought it was an amazing book. Um, Thanks. And, and the overlapping of God as an artist, God as a creator, God as a woman, um, I just thought was so interesting. Um, at how, how much uh, did you sort of feel like you had the story in your head and you knew where it was going to go or were there surprises kind of along the way of, did you know that you were going to make Abraham an artist and live in New York? And how no. did that? The, the first part of the book was, was easy, the creation part. And I actually thought I would finish this book in a year and I missed a lot of deadlines. Uh, like the minute the creation stories ended, which are, the, those were written, the, the book of Genesis is made up of different sections that were each written at very different times. And they're just told in totally different styles and the language is different. So that first ancient part was the part that I was prepared to write. And then when I hit the story of Abraham, it felt like a totally different story. And I ended up having to change my style and working in, work in a different style and Eventually, I decided to change the tense of the book where the, the early part takes place in the past and then Abraham and Isaac, the middle part, take place in the present. And I kind of based Abraham on kind of an auteur character like a Philip Roth or a John Updike or a, he's an artist though. So um, I don't know, Jackson Pollock. So, so he's kind of like that God was kind of me as an artist and my unbridled ego and then self-hatred when I show any ego. And then, and then I had Abraham be kind of this like kind of narcissistic, single-minded, monomaniacal male artist who is obsessed with God. And he believes that God has told him that he will be a great artist. And his whole life is about realizing that aim. And he never does. He doesn't become a great artist. And it's sad and I, I do relate to him too, but it's a part of me that I really have to suppress in order to be a human being, which, which is lucky for me and lucky for my art and something that great male artists didn't have to do in the past. And then they died miserable and made the same thing over and over. But yeah, I'm, I, I set him in the present partly because that was how I made sense of the story that I didn't quite have access to and partly because I didn't know what Abraham would have worn in the in the past past yeah Mostly well that. I like him in the present thank you <laughs> and I like that it was in New York you know because yeah. that's always been a sort of magic you know place place for me yeah I feel it now I I hated it for a while living here it was so crowded and so money but I miss it so much. I'm, I'm hiding in Brooklyn and I just miss the city so very much. Well, yeah, it's, you... that, it's that kind of in the New York I went to college to in when I didn't have such complicated feelings about Manhattan. It was a little bit grungier and it was a little more real Manhattan. Yeah. An art student. Do you think that most, I mean, what you were saying about making art and that it does take this sort of um, monomania, maybe a little bit, and this belief. I, I don't. I hate saying it even because it's so disgusting. But a belief that you're special in some way, that you're not just. I don't know what like. In working in a box factory or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, do you, I don't know, do you feel that like there's something sort of special about being an artist or do you think that this is like 
like, you know, I mean, I don't know even like the, what that means, but like, I mean, as another person who does, you know, make, you know, gets an idea for something and then you just think, you know, I embarrass myself. Yeah, exactly. They, yeah. I don't know, pe random people, including my editor were so baffled by why, why would God be embarrassed after she made something? And I can't even explain it. It's so obvious. It's of so obvious. Yeah. 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 Um, you just made something. It's I know. Like, I know. It was gross. It's like, oh, well, <laughs> you made... must think you're pretty hot. <laughs> Shit. Well, I have to make. Yes. Oh, and then like showing it. Like, yeah. Like, <gasps> <laughs> have you ever seen a glass of water so beautiful that looks so good <gasps> look what i mean you know, that looks delicious so oh this is it and here we are like but but your book is great it is really um i mean it's very very moving there's so many things in it that just the what you were saying about god um being there and then like slowly sort of gradually yeah like, going away and she's also I don't know it I don't remember if I put this in the book I was trying to figure out how to do it and I couldn't really figure it out I don't know why and I might have just gotten rid of it at the last minute but I wanted God to be aging from a little girl to kind of a late teenager or something throughout the book and and I feel like that's what happens you kind of lose I don't want to talk about this. I'm so bored with myself, but I have a baby and I've been learning so much about where art comes from watching him. He's just, he thinks he's this, like a cockadoodle do. He's just so pleased with everything he can do. He's like, he's like, I can, I can pick, like, I can use my hands to pick something up. Can you believe it? And I, I noticed that I don't even have to pay attention to him because he's so sure that everyone is paying attention to him at any moment. And he's just like everything, like everything he looks at is really, really, really cool. And I think that's what the child's God is like. And I think I don't really feel like that anymore, but I think that's where my art comes from. That like when I was formed as an artist, that's what was there. And I value it a lot. Do you feel like that? I do. Yeah. I, I feel that way too. I don't think I would keep going if there wasn't, if you hear a weird voice, that's my parrot. Oh. There, she hears me talking and she's going, ah, wah, wah. Um, but yeah, the, it, um, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, I think if 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 I only had the embarrassed voice, you know, I don't think I could keep going. I guess you know? the embarrassed voice is embarrassed that we know we are so delighted with ourselves. Like you're not supposed to admit that. Yeah, yeah, but sometimes I do anyway, because because it really sometimes is so surprising, you know to me still, you know, if something turns out like, and I'm, it's like, oh, I picked up this raisin with my little, yeah. myself. <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. It's fun to watch someone be so pleased with themselves. Oh, it's, it's also funny because I'm going through it a second time with a grandchild. Yeah. And whose name happens to be Liana, which is just so crazy. Um, <laughs> and, you know, for our audience, I think you wrote me a letter. You, we started writing letters when I think you were like 14, right? Yeah, or, maybe 15. 15? So, yeah, I yeah. mean, it's just very... I still know. have all of yours. Oh, I have your... Oh, I have... Yes, I have yours. I have yours. Yeah, it's... It's very funny. Um, yeah, you were you were so kind. I can't imagine myself being kind like that to someone who wrote to me. It's different now with DMs and things. Yes. Well, also Did you feel um, like deluged with random letters from fifteen year olds. Uh, no, no. Um, 
it was well when when I was younger when I was like your age um I really did not get tons of letters from 15 year olds um and yours were unusual so yeah I don't know I had a feeling that, so full of themselves well I wrote I like saved I was very formal and shy and also just like I have to do this so I save I like I I found a draft of a letter of the first letter to you because I it, I made it too weird and then I had to save it and start over and it was yeah it was really strange <laughs> <laughs> I don't know well uh so let me let me get back to this here um so you were before you started you were familiar with the, the genesis story actually somebody um in the questions asked a question about this um did you ever read the r crumb genesis book no but okay i'll tell you what i think mr natural is the best depiction of god i've ever seen yes yes and i i will tell you i tried to read Prince genesis but i did not succeed that happened to me also do you, you know why do you think so almost all depictions of God have been male. I mean, it's in, in your book, you do sort of say, well, he couldn't, uh, I can't remember which character it was that she had to sort of not reveal the fact that, that God was female. Yeah, the language is male. Like in the Torah, I guess, um, I, I don't know other religions too well. But I wish there were more depictions of God in in Jewish, Christian, Muslim world. Like a different, like more or more varied or yeah, I meant more less male, more more varied. Did you ever imagine God is not embodied by a person? Yeah, I I just realized I haven't asked people I grew up with what they thought of God. I, so I don't know if this was, if I'm an outlier or I often say that Jews don't care that much if you believe in God or not. It's not like, it's not as much as Christianity is about belief. It's more just about doing the stuff and <clears throat> being with community and eating kosher and all the millions of rules but I know I know my mom believes I I don't know but I believe my mom believes in um something vague and I believe my dad kind of doesn't believe or care or think about it much but both of them are are much more in tune with Judaism than I am and my husband very much believes he's insane yeah just kidding he's watching <laughs> yeah well I I think I think about all of these things a lot but it's still just so amorphous and sometimes I wonder whether I should really start going to temple but I think I would hate it oh god I know I I never think about whether I believe in god or not it's just not it's not an issue for me I do feel very guilty that I'm not reading more I kind of I think I have a lot of things that I think of as holy but they're mostly places and books and art and and once I think something is holy it's hard to look at it anymore and but I, I do feel I, synagogue is one of the places I think of as holy and I feel terribly guilty that I don't go but I don't, I haven't found, I, yeah, community weirds me out. Like synagogues feel full of people breathing. I don't like it. I don't like smelling it. Yeah. And Gross. I don't, I think there might be people that were like overly nice or something or overly. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's it. That's what it is. That's any small community. I think you have to lie a lot in order to maintain the fabric of the community. You have yes. to pretend you like people you don't dislike, but also don't really want to talk to. Right. That's the freedom, I think, of New York. 
that yeah, we don't, and- it's so crowded that to maintain community, you maintain a little bit of distance. Exactly. And, you know, it's, it's a kind of more polite than getting in somebody's face and forcing you to, you know, s- smile and make conversation. And, you know, not that I hate that. Well, I sort of do. But. I do. I hate it. It feels, it feels dishonest and it feels like you're telling someone you don't like them secretly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't care for it. I'm gonna... Okay. I like I like that about New York and I think that's that's what I chase in New York but what I don't like in New York is when people just walk into you because they're not looking at you and they're kind of aggressively willing you not to exist and that's not New York so much as it is the internet like the world in this moment yeah yeah well it's also the phones I mean I get the phone yeah people are on their phones and they're walking yeah or they're um, even just thinking about their phone yeah they're more I mean they're not there they're not yeah but they're angry yeah I don't I don't know it's well right now I don't know I haven't been on the I haven't been on the subway since you know in the last couple of days so it wasn't you just kidding (laughs) yeah no I, I I would have had a bow and arrow I think yeah um but yeah yeah um I don't, I don't know what what the subway is like now but it is interesting like as soon as I think it's amazing that it just doesn't happen more yeah know. I know me too we're all so jammed together and it's so crazy and we all hate each other yeah or just like wish everybody else was dead in a kind of impersonal way um let me see uh let me see I brought my baby to the Met a few weeks ago and I was wearing him and people still were just, I didn't get a single smile while I was there because it was a very crowded day and people were just walking into us. Really? Yeah, I was so mad. It's not, it's not like that much where I live now in Brooklyn. It's less crowded and people acknowledge each other. Yeah. But I still miss the city so much. I find that at night, the crowds are kinder and slower and more like aware of each other. Yeah. I, I like, I like with your work that you have these three different, at least three different parts that I know about. You have the work you do for the New Yorker, cartoons you do for the New Yorker. You have your Instagram feed, which is so inspiring and amazing. And you, I don't know, how does she do it all? No, I mean, and the books. Um, that's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff. It's, do you think that there's anything I've been asked this question and sometimes I hate this question, but sometimes I wonder about it and wonder whether I hate it because I don't know. And I don't like even thinking about it, but that there's something different. Like if you're, um, do you think that men and women are the same like creatively I think that the way I I think these days I think we are just conditioned so 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 differently and I think that's what it is I mean I don't yeah I oh I feel like I'm very wired to, I think Instagram comes easily to me because I'm very wired to like jump and, and take care of what has just come up in the last second, as opposed to focusing on some big work of genius, even if that work of genius for like a man might be like whatever he was planning to do in this hour. Like, I I just feel like um, I'm really painting with a broad brush, but personally, as I've been conditioned because of the patriarchy to look around for what needs to be done and do it and put that ahead of whatever is on my plate at that moment. And I feel like maybe if I had been born a man, I would have been conditioned to prioritize whatever I'd been planning to do from a few, like for the past few hours. And 
let the little things, the sudden things go. Mm -hmm. So that makes me very different. That makes me, I think, I think I have a leg up when it comes to cartooning, but it is hard for me to stay inside a book. And every, every time I have a little doubt about a book, about something I'm doing in a book, I run away with the doubt and I meander in a million directions. And it, I, I say, I, I make all the different meandering paths and then I have to go back and choose the right path after the fact. And it's a very slow, painstaking process. I think I'm learning how to do it more easily, but it does not come naturally to me to make a large thing. What, yeah. how do you feel about making a large thing? I have a similar sort of the doubt thing. I mean, and, and it's funny because, um, you know, each book has its own thing, you know, it's not yeah. like you make one book and now you know how to make a book. Yes. Um, it's like you go back to square one. I agree. Is that, a? do you feel like that's a gender thing or just a book thing? I don't know. I don't know. I know that it's hard for me to feel the kind of confidence that I feel like some, um, and maybe that's because I suck and I shouldn't have a confidence, you know? Maybe that's why, maybe, uh, um, but I feel like there's a lot of guys who don't have that same kind of constant, um, you know, self-doubt. Yeah. The and self maybe helps maybe in a lot of ways but there's too much of it. What were you saying? Sorry. No, I was, I was just going to say that maybe some, I mean, I know a few, you know, I'm mean, just thinking of Jason Katzenstein and a few artists that I know who are plagued with doubt, you know, mm -hmm. have doubt and many others too, men, guys, but in general. Yeah. I know a lot of guys who are plagued with doubt and in a funny way, I find that I fight against the doubt harder because I've been told that I have doubt and that I have to fight against it. And I think maybe men haven't been told that as, as intensely as I have. So if they have doubt, they really believe it. Yeah. When I have doubt, I'm going to fight through it. Yeah. Cause we've been sort of hit with it our whole lives. I mean, there were yeah. so, there are so comparatively few women artists. And then on top of that, there are assholes who will, you know, even in, you know, I can't think of any right now, like this year, but like guys who don't even believe that women can be artists somehow, you know, or that yeah. we're inferior in some way. And there's times where I go to see um, an artist, Florine Stettheimer, or um, there was somebody else I saw recently, an incredible there's show. There's gotta be another one. Oh, I know, I know. I'm think, I'm trying to think of this. Maybe it was Sonia Delaunay. I mean, you, and you think of how many incredible, oh, and of course, um, Hilma of Klimt and, you know, blah, 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 blah. I mean, but you think about how many women who just probably just got completely passed over. Yeah. You know, because they just weren't accepted into the, you know. I do find that confidence comes from success. So there's that, like, if you know that someone will pay you for making drawings, you have much, much less doubt making the drawings. I don't know if that extends to books. That's what I was going to say for like individual drawings. I have had that. I'm okay with that. But for books, they're hard, you know, they're hard. And I, I have that same thing that you're talking about, like many different meandering paths. I'm so and glad having, you have that too. I, oh, I didn't God. know. I've gone through, I'm working on a book right now and I have gone through at least two deadlines. Is um, it about dreams? It is about dreams. Yes, it is. And Oh, I had the best dream that I've been wanting to tell you. Can I tell oh, you it? Yeah, everyone, yeah, please. Can I tell you all it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I dreamed that I found a treasure map to 
a house of dogs and they happened to live in my childhood home. And I knew that if they found me, they would kill me, but I really wanted the treasure. So I went, I snuck in, I found the treasure. The map was covered in paw prints, by the way. I found the treasure. I like unwrapped one of the treasures and inside it was just an iPad. And I thought this isn't worth dying over it. Like this is fancy, yes, but this isn't <laughs> worth dying over. So I- Did it come with a pencil? Of, um, hmm. there, that's the crux. So I put it back, I left, I woke up, I told my husband, he said, you shouldn't have had that map. And he, he was so serious that I couldn't stop laughing. And then I turned over and next to my bed on my night table was my Apple pencil chewed to a pulp <gasps> by my dog. Oh my God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a good one. Cause it was psychic. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that is weird. Yeah. That's very weird. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think, uh, oh, yeah, I dreams are interesting. Something about the self-doubt though. Are you very, very critical of other people's art? Oh, I am very critical. Um, I doubt everyone. Uh, I'm trying to think. There's so many people that I love and then there's a lot of people who I don't like at all. Yeah, so. I feel the same. I'm not critical of the people I love because I think if you tap... If you like get into a certain kind of story, you don't need to be genius, genius, genius all every second. Like you just have to tell the story. Yeah. So many people haven't found it. It's hard to find it. I'd rather I'm I I I don't like the the kind of work that makes me really sad is where somebody has this style where I know it just took them like a billion years. Yep. And the story is so boring that you just yeah. want to put a bullet in your head. Yeah. And you never want to look at another cartoon again. And, uh, you know, the drawing can be magnificent, but if there's no, yeah. sorry. It's not magnificent though. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I mean, you're, I love, I love your style. I think that it all, you know, the story, the drawing and um, the printing, the handwriting, yeah. it all oh. fits together really beautifully. Thank you. Um, I like how the book was printed. I think they did a good job. They chose a good red. Yes. And yes, I was going to say, and that yeah. one color. Yeah. Like, How did that sort of, did you always know you were going to do one color or did they say... Yeah, I've done one color historically with this publisher. It's and it's not printed in CMYK. It's printed in it's called is it KD or something? No, no, no. It's like spot color where they just use one pure ink or something. Oh, oh, that's and, cool. Like silk and so the color is like really saturated. Yeah, and it's good. And it's always hard to choose. You choose a Pantone color. I have. I don't know where it. I had some card. Oh, here it is. Okay. This was. These are the choices of color. But they put a lot of care into that. Uh, I love how it looks. It's a really good-looking book. Thank you. Yeah, I chose that it should be a normal book size. And I think it's not, I think it's nine by six, it, it feels like. And it's, I don't know if I like that a comic book should be the size and shape of a hardcover novel, but it worked for the panel somehow. It was, there were fewer on a page than I've done in the past. And it somehow is less daunting to finish a page. When, did, when how long did it take you to put the whole book together? It took me much, much longer than I'd planned to because I made it and destroyed it so many times. It must have taken five years, four years. This is with the dream book. I've destroyed so much. 
and torn stuff up, put stuff aside. It's it's hard. It's hard to figure yeah, out. Yeah, it's hard. I didn't um, know you did that. And it's kind of makes me feel better to know that. Do you get into it and then take a step back and destroy it? Or are you not into it till the very end? Um, no, I get into it. And then I work along a certain path. And then I look at it and I hate it. And I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I have a, I have another idea now. I'm finishing up a book. Um, I'm illustrating a children's book with my friend Patty, Patty Marks. Um, and I'm I almost- I love your children's book. She's a great collaborator. Um, and uh, when I finish with that, then I'm going to really get back into the dream book in, in earnest. But I think since it is now, it's 847, and I think we should open it up to questions if anybody- has any they can oh I see okay so does anybody have any questions if you type something into the q and a I think a person will appear in my apartment and um, house and on a velvet pillow will prevent present a question to me there will be tassels from each corner of the pillow um well Nobody's asked anything yet. So I'm going to go on with it. Um, so yeah, as you mentioned in the book, the, cre the, the two urges of creation and destruction. So, uh, oh, I, there is a question here. Um, did writing the book, this is a really interesting question. Did writing the book change your view of Genesis? Yeah, mine, it did. As I was like, it, it was a shock, weirdly a shock to me that God kind of disappears midway. Um, I think of myself as being familiar with the book of Genesis, but I think it turns out that like once a year or so I'll pick up the Torah and think it's time, not like the Torah, but just a book of the Torah and think, all right, I'll, it's time to reread these, this because I grew up with it and I love it. And I'll read a bit and then I'll put it down. And then the next year I'll start at the beginning again. So I don't think I've read the later parts of Genesis since high school. I've never read Genesis all the way through. I mean, I was sort of amazed. You say that your, you know, that your knowledge of Judaism is not as deep as you know, I, I suppose a scholar of, I can't, you know, or even my brother and parents, I just, I was less good student. I can't read Rashi script. I can't read Aramaic at all, you know, but, but there was so, I mean, the list of all the descendants, it was, that just was amazing to me. Oh, I know. I wanted to ask you about the underwater. Is that really true? What is that? No. That was so funny. Yeah. I, okay. I'm, I'm very proud of the last third of the book because it's not terrible. I was on a very, very tight deadline and I, I did pull it together, but I could have spent a little more time on it, caveat. Um, yeah, so there's a point in the story of Joseph where his brothers do throw him down a well, but in the real Torah, it's a dry well and he gets taken out again. But in my story, every the whole story takes place in this merman lands underwater. I love that. It's so imaginative. Um, what will, okay, somebody is asking this. What will a non-religious person learn about religion and the religious through this book? Um, I'm a non-religious person. So I would say this book is for you. This book is for anyone who loves reading and this book is here to tell you that you can read the Torah, you can read the book of Genesis without being religious, and you can also love God without worshiping God and or even believing in God, and you can make God in your own image or in anyone's image. It's interesting that in one thing I do know about Judaism is that the graven image is, is prohibited. That I just don't understand. That's another reason. Of, like, I, there's some things, they don't make me angry. I just don't get it. I mean, I do get it. It's historical and there were idols and this was a, a new, different thing. But right now it doesn't make as much sense. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a strange thing. I remember when I was a kid um, going to a temple in, we were in Spain and the walls were covered. It was almost like, um, um, like a, a, a Muslim temple, Muslim temple. I mean, yeah. it was all pattern and script and, you know, just That's not so beautiful. It was very, very beautiful. Um, what color? Um, blue and white and a little bit of other color, but the main colors were blue and white. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of uh, interesting. In a way, I think that's why I couldn't imagine God how I wanted to, because there really aren't images of God in, in Judaism. Yeah, it's definitely, it's so different from Christianity where everything yeah, is so very different. literal. Yeah. And uh, I kind of, I have a little collection of some Christian visual iconography that, yeah. you know, like St. Lucy with her eyeballs on a plate. Yes. And, I love that stuff. Oh, I do too. I mean, it's so, it's so literal and I don't understand it at all. You know, it just makes no. so, no, I know I don't understand it, but I think that's why I kind of like it. I know. I think it would be less fun if we believed it. Yeah, probably, it. probably it would be sort of uh, scary. Yeah. Um, somebody asked, is this book for children too? Um, I wrote it very inspired by children's books. I, my kid is too young for me to know what's appropriate for a kid who can read. I'm not sure. I, I think it's fine for kids. I don't know if it's great. I don't know if it's fun enough. Yeah. When I, my mother sent me to Bible, uh, we would go to synagogue, not often, but occasionally. And there's one on Ocean Parkway. We went yeah, there. that's where my parents went. I mean, I think that's where my parents went as kids. If and it had like stairs like eh, 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 on both sides of the door. I don't, I'm not that psychic. I don't oh, remember. I, I don't know. Like, okay, here's the door in the middle where, my, but there were these little steps that kind of, I don't know, anyway. Um, but afterwards I would go, my mother hated it. She, well, she hated the, the Bible school part because she said that unless I brought my book of Bible, I don't remember this at all. She said, unless I brought my book of uh, Bible stories, that nothing would get done so I guess the teacher would read from that book I don't know I don't remember this at all and I remember she used to pay me a quarter to go so I don't have like a great it was like Sunday school yeah except it was on, I think it was on Saturday Saturday school I guess we had to read this like kids version of the Parsha when I was at school and I remember my mom had uh, or my parents but my mom had to sign it and that's how I learned to forge a signature. She had to sign it to say that I read it and I protested by not reading it. And then I fake signed it. And looking back, it was a really fun, bad 70s illustration. And I wish I had paid more attention. Like the characters had these empty eyeballs. It's, it, was, <laughs> it was really kitschy, but mm. good. How did, so, okay, this is not a question directly about the book. It's actually not about the book, but how did you come to cartooning? Um, I grew up drawing. My mom is an artist. She had been an architect before I was born and a little bit after I was born. And then she became an artist and we lived in the country and I went to a very small school and there weren't too many like real art classes or other kids who are really into art so we just kind of did our own thing I drew all the time looking back I if I had been at a more sophisticated big school I would have been told that I was cartooning and I would have called myself a cartoonist but I was just drawing and I had kind of a crisis when I 
finally got to art school and was surrounded by other artists and realized that what I was doing was not art necessarily. Um, like I wasn't making giant sculptures and I wasn't making very, maybe this is why I really don't like academic cartooning. It's like, come on, like you're allowed to not make academic drawings. Why are you doing it? Um, so I had kind of a, it actually happened before college. I think I realized that I wanted to be a cartoonist and I wanted to go to Cooper Union and I applied there with my cartoons and I was told that I had to show fine art. And I took that to mean that fine art is better than cartoons. So I decided I was a fine artist. I made a new portfolio and I don't know, I just kind of drifted back to cartooning after college, partly because being an artist is very hard. It didn't work. I didn't really try. Did you like making fine art as much as you liked making cartoons? No, I was so bad at it. Did, was there, did you, was there any fine art that you, I mean, I really liked holding a video camera and making abstract videos. I think that was it. And I really appreciate graphic design. Yeah, I appreciate graphic design. I love painting, but. I don't I like making like, paintings. Yeah. It was not, um, there was a lot of, uh, when I was at art school, there was a lot of like talk. Yeah. You know? There was a lot of talk about art and I don't know, it drove me kind of bats. Were you uh, surprised that you didn't like it? Did you think you would? I don't know what I thought. I don't really I think I thought I would like it more and I thought that they would like me more. Same. I thought that yeah. it would be just more, um, you know, well, hi, this is what I do. And like, what can I learn? Um, but it was more like, oh no, you're that you do this other, you don't, you, this isn't art, what you, what yeah. you do. Yeah, it was really painful for me because I had not, I think I didn't fit in when I was really young because I didn't want to fit in and then in high school, I didn't fit in because I was traumatized from not fitting in for so long and I was shy and sad. And I really thought college would be it. And it, it wasn't at all. It was terrible. Did you feel that like when you got out of college, like things just kind of, it was like, it was a reset? It was great. There was one moment I remember the December after I left college when I didn't feel like depressed and anxious for the first time. And it just felt so different and it yeah. came back, but like, that was a glimpse that I hadn't felt that way in a decade. Yeah. Well, I'm really glad you did come to back to cartooning and yeah, um, your stuff is fantastic. And I'm far from the only one who, who thinks so. Thank um, you. You're my favorite. And it's mutual. So, um, I guess uh, it's nine, mm -hmm. and um, I think you're you're. Thanks, Russ. Yes, this was really wonderful. Really, really, really. Oh, this well, thanks, and I thank you for. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, right. thank you both so much. Thank you both for uh, joining us so much today, and. Um, uh, please uh, go check out go check out Let There Be Light. Um, we uh, put the links in pals.com and so check it out there. Purchase a copy and uh, while you're there, yes, yeah. check out our other upcoming events and all that and uh, yeah, thank you. Please come and join us again for another event and both of you it's wonderful to have you and just thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks. Thank have you. a good night everybody. Bye. 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 Night. Bye Russ. Bye. Bye. Bye.